What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Monday. Yeah, Monday. <laughs> Had to check myself. Monday, May 1st. My God. Here you go, PC. Sing it with me. Wake up. Wake up. It's the first of the month. Get up. Get up. It's the first of the month. All right. Everybody else can sing with me, too. It doesn't have to just be me and PC singing. Anyways, today we're talking about veteran Buckeyes. Huge expectations I have for fourth year, fourth year Buckeyes. Um, I got three guys in my crosshairs here that I'm going to talk about that I have huge expectations for this year going into 2023. They've got to make a leap, and they they are starters, but they need to – not just be um, uh, average. They need to really uh, show up and and make this a, a big year for them. Uh, not just for so they can jump to the league or something, but because we need these guys, these three these three guys to show up big time. Starting off, one of the most important positions on the field, left tackle Josh Fryer. It's going to be a first time starter, most likely. Uh, his first three years at Ohio State have been rough, he would call them. Uh, COVID-19 in the 2020 season, you know, shortened his development uh, towards ACL in 2021. Uh, waited his turn last year, had 231 snaps in 2022. Um, did have 62 snaps against Michigan when Matt Jones was out with an injury. Uh, he mostly was in the bison package as an extra tight end on the end of the line, you know, uh, lined up on both sides of the, of the lines of the, uh, the, the front line on, you know, left and right. Um, uh, but he believes, he believes that he grew a lot last year and said having to wait for his chance to start made him uh, quote a lot more hungry. Um, so a fourth year tackle, this is, it's time to go. You know, uh, usually year three is when it's time to go. Didn't happen for him. Still recovering. So this is year four. Time to go. He's taken the majority of reps with the ones at left tackle this this spring. So uh, uh, Justin Fry has said that Josh Fryer, JF and JF Fry on Fryer. Fry, Fry goes in the Fryer. And uh, anyway, that sounds weird. Embracing the role of, said that Fryer is embracing the role of being a veteran in the room. Uh, he's pleased with how Fryer is trying to take his next step in his training and keep progressing and how hard he goes in practice. Um, Josh Fryer said it hasn't been hard for him to switch from right tackle to left because he's ex he has experience lining up all over the offensive line, like I mentioned, with that bison roll package, you know, as a six offensive lineman. Um, uh, he does take the 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 job of protecting the quarterback's blind side very seriously. Uh, his quote was, I feel like it's a huge responsibility, but I'm willing to take that responsibility. He said it's an extreme honor to be trusted with that responsibility. So uh, Ryan Day hasn't outright named him the starter, but he's making progress uh, toward lock, locking down a starting job. Um, no one else has been mentioned really at, at left tackle, especially with the ones. Um he just hasn't been consistent enough to name be named that starter right now, but it's only May 1st, right? I just said that. Uh, Brian Day said he's getting there, uh, but he can't right now say that he's locked down that position yet. Uh, it's just that consistency of doing it over and over again. Um, he, Ryan Day said he has the ability. He's shown he can do it this spring. He just needs to increase that consistency, and then he'll lock it down. You lock it up. Lock down. Uh no question, in my opinion, Josh Fryer is your starting left tackle, and that is one of the most important positions on this field, and we need him to play like a starting left tackle at Ohio State. So um, big shoes to fill with Paris Johnson moving on. So um, let's see a Josh Fryer. Uh, next up, tight end, Joe Royer kind of keeping it along the O-line. Uh, he had a rough 2022, man. He had uh, – what do you have? Um, his mom died. Anyways, it doesn't matter what else he had. That's enough. Uh, that's brutal. Um, so yeah, I feel bad for the guy. So, all right. New year, 
you, you know, Kate Stover is the clear starter. He had 700 snaps last year. Mitch Rossi's gone, 286 snaps there. Um, Royer did have 28 snaps against Georgia in that Peach Bowl. Don't forget that. So he was kind of on that on that return, you know, getting back into form and and uh, reestablishing himself in that bowl practice. Um, rotated with the ones in in spring practice when they pulled Kate, Kate out. Um, he gained more and more important key experience with uh, the starting offense, and that's huge. You know, working with them. Uh, Ryan Day said that uh, back in April, uh, the development of Royer and G. Scott is critical. We need to continue to develop that room. 12 personnel has been very, very important to us, and it has to continue to be moving forward. So finding three tight ends in the room, we feel confident putting the game on, putting in the game is something that we really got to do a great job with. Uh, Keenan Bailey's doing a good job of building power of the unit in that room. And I think those guys are putting in days. They're out here every day. They're grinding. They're getting better. You could feel that, but that's very important to the success of our offense. Exactly. you got to have at least three tight ends. You're going to have injuries and shit like that. So got to have three you can trust to put in the game at any time. So um, I believe uh, Joe Royer is going to be a major contributor this year, not just in blocking and things like that, but he's going to catch passes big body dude that that has you know the athleticism to make catches in traffic and and stretch the field so look for joe royer in year four to to, to take off in my opinion um last guy uh he's he's played quite a bit of ball but um Lathan ransom got him at the the bandit or strong safety this is uh his fourth year he had a strong 2022 missed all of spring practice though last year. So this is his first spring back uh, since the broken leg in the Rose bowl. Um, he was a bright spot starting the season last year, made plays throughout the season, uh, had nine starts over 600 snaps, uh, but down the stretch, uh, he began to drop off as and the defense as a whole kind of did. They gave up far too many explosive plays down the stretch, uh, got cooked in the Peach Bowl against Georgia. Uh, he had 15 missed tackles on the season. That's way too many. He has the skill set to play all three positions. I think, see, I this is where I disagree with the coaches. I don't know what you guys think. Hit, hit me in the comments or whatever. Uh, I think he could – He's best at the adjuster, the deep safety, your Jordan, Jordan Fuller, you know, if somebody escapes, <laughs> you know, you're the last line of defense, you got to take that guy down. Um, so uh, mostly, though, he's practicing at that strong safety, the bandit down in the box, covering tight ends and stuff like that. So he put on 10 pounds to play the bandit. So it seems pretty serious that the coaches want him at that bandit role. So I disagree with it. I think he's a little undersized, but uh, he needs to be a playmaker for this defense in 2023. Fourth-year guy could make the jump to the league because he's played a lot of ball, but uh, I think he's really got to uh, he's got to improve that that pass coverage um, area. Like his his coverage grade last year, according to PFF, was a 76 on the season, but he had some games where he was flimsy. Like I'm talking. Like we talked about the Georgia game, uh, he gave up a total of let's see, he had 32 targets, 20 allowed 23 receptions. That's a 71 percent completion percentage against him. That's not good, man. I don't care what the PFF fucking coverage grade says. Uh, that doesn't compute in my book. So he's given up 11.8 yards per catch. Uh, gave up a few touchdowns. Um, did have a couple block punts over the year, but um, he's got some terrible games here at coverage against Georgia. His grade was a 37.9. Yeah. Cause he got roasted um, against, against Penn state of 58, nine uh, against Michigan, 49, one. And you can see the games that were tight against good teams is where he graded poorly. So we need these guys, these four guys, uh, especially Lathan, all show up and play like fourth year Buckeyes. So let me know what you guys think. Any other fourth year guys you might be looking at hit me up in the comments, email me, whatever, hit me on Twitter, but uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow and good luck.